And just like that, we back with part two. Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome to part two. And before YouTube do their thing, let us do ours first. Copyright disclaimer. Under section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Non-profit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. Viewer discretion is advised. All right then. All right, beloved. Let's uh, keep on going in part two. Uh, welcome back, beloved. Welcome back. And um, the reason, again, why we do this, it's one, if we make everything like we used to make YouTube find something they don't like, they will ban the whole video. So you will have two hours or three hours of video just black and then you can't see it. But when do it one by an hour, an hour, you know, if one of them has something, they will be able to black one. And we always give it time for people to take a, a 10 to 15 minutes break uh, to get some whatever food or use the bathroom and things like that. We just don't want to make you sit there for two, three hours. Some of you don't mind this, but we give the opportunity for you to stretch your legs and go get some coffee and refill your bag of popcorn or go buy another bottle of wine. Because, you know, our people love wine, you know. It's all good. Now, beloved, let us go to the other rest of the videos, okay? This is mainly going to be videos, all right? We just wanted to point out a lot of things in the first one, but let's watch. And this morning, we are learning more about this chaos at the State Fair of Texas as shootings and crowds running Saturday night and forced everyone to evacuate Fair Park. Hmm. This morning, we're seeing new video from that night and learning more about the suspect who is now in custody. Yeah, this shooting, though, raising a lot of questions about security at the fair. The fair just introduced some new uh, security protocols this year after a shooting scare on the same day last year. That includes a high-tech weapons detection system. Natalie Haddad is live at the Fair Park this morning with the latest Good morning. Good morning, Kara. Good morning to Shara. Three people are still recovering today after being shot here at the State Fair of Texas on Saturday night. Certainly a lot of questions still left unanswered. Dallas police uh, overseeing this investigation. But meanwhile, here at WFA, we have been gathering footage from witnesses here that night on Saturday. Clearly moments of terror felt by so many fair goers. In fact, take a look at this video we just got uh, overnight or since it last night. Rather, you can hear people screaming and see people ducking for cover and running out of the food court. You also see a lot Law enforcement officer arrived with a gun drawn and you even hear a police officer shouting. A fair goer from Austin shared this video with us. He took cover under a table with his pregnant wife there in that food court. That is where the shooting happened. Now that fair goer who shared that video with us also shared a photo with WFA that he says he took of one of the shooting victims lying on the ground. Now police arrested 22 year old Cameron Turner and charged him with aggravated assault. Yeah, so again, beloved, like I said before, this is not the time to try to go out there and enjoy time. There are certain people who don't want to be around them, okay? And again, they will they will do the best they can do to try to say, well, this guy is black, he's one of us. No, he's not, you know, he's not. You know, we don't know this dude. A lot of the people that look like us walking around, they are soulless. And then especially the two third, they don't give a crap, man. They're gonna sit there, you look at them the wrong way, they shot and kill you. Well, why did you kill this guy? Well, I, you know, he, he, he was looking at me like he was going to do something. So I did something to him before he did it to me. We don't know this dude. So our people, we need to stop vibrating on a low frequency and then go out there and act like a fool because this dude got dealt with for shooting one man and two women. Again, in that food court in the tower building here on the fairgrounds, he told police he felt threatened by them as they approached him inside where that food court is. Now, Turner. Again, like I said, 
a lot of the people out there, people will say, well, this is mental illness. No, it's not mental illness. You will have people that just sit there and you yourself, you minding your own business. You don't know, you don't know John, you don't know Jack. You're just walking through, going about your business day. You just simply look at someone, that person feel threatened and then drop you up on the floor. Like, yo, you know, he was going to do something to me because those people, it's not that they're paranoid. They're soulless. Is claiming self defense in the shooting. Thankfully, all three victims are in stable condition and expected to survive their injuries. Okay, that's what it is. Okay, those guys they will just shoot and kill you. We see this happen so many times over there in, in that party. This is in Chicago. This dude show up and then he's there. They, when he get into the entrance of the door, there was a dude there. I look at him and smile. And then he passed the guy, and then he turned around and pa 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 pa. He shot the guy. He killed him. And then when the police got him, he said, "Why'd you do this?" He said, "Well, when I got there, you know, he looked at me, smiled at me, like he was going to do something. So I, I, I defend myself. So I kill him before he kill me because that's how a lot of two thirds get set up because he was invited to the party by a girl. It happened so many times. I believe in two thousand seven. There was a party going on somewhere here in Florida. And then there was a dude. He looked at the guy. He passed. Just like you go to a party, you look left, you, you look right. You go. He looked at the guy and then he passed. The guy just like kill him. And then when the people at the party say, yo, what you do that for? He say, he look at me the wrong way, dog. I don't like when people look at me like that, son. I don't like this hate, man. Be looking at me like you are going to do something and stuff. Because that's what they are. And then he fled. They, they got that guy in, in, in Georgia. He was going dread. Uh, he went to the mountain of Georgia and hide. He grew some dread. And then they got him. A lot of people are like that, man. Just like they just feel threatened by people just walking next to them, around them, looking at them. That's why we told our people, be very careful, man. You know, if you have to go someplace, man, read the place. Read the room. And I will avoid going to places that have a multitude of people because this isn't the time for that. This time long past. Now it's time for judgment. Let's keep on moving. Tragedy last week in Hialeah. Police say a 13-year-old confessed to killing his own mother. Local news reporter Leanne Morahong is live in Hialeah hmm. with the latest. Leanne. And ever since the news of this crime broke on Friday, this has been sending shockwaves not only through this community, but also throughout the nation. This is making nationwide headlines. I want to go ahead and show you some new photos we've obtained of 13-year-old Derek Rosa. This is... Again, beloved, usually they won't show the picture of a 13-year-old, but I guess because the mother is no more and the father say, the stepfather say, hey, I don't give a crap, show his face. Most of the time, the parents they want you. They want they want allow that. You know they want allow that. You know, and um, but this dude is thirteen, and he waited until the mother go to sleep, and he stabbed her to death. You know, and a lot of those guys they are dealing with. They are soulless. Look at the the eye of this kid. He's dead inside. You know. Shortly after he was taken into custody by the Hialeah Police Department, charged with the heinous murder of his own mother. These are two photos, one of them uh, referred to as a mugshot that is a booking photo. He is currently in secure detention at the juvenile detention. Just like we stay in part one, this guy came through this woman here. Doesn't mean the woman is truly his spiritual mother or his true mother. He just came into this woman. He doesn't know her. To do this to your own mother at 13 years old, you must have carried a lot of hatred against this woman. I don't know what the mother did to him. Probably she took her, she took his game or she took something that she was giving to him because uh, the father was, he, you know, he, the stepfather was the one who fathered the first child, the baby. And he didn't hurt the baby, uh, which means that this was very personal. And he killed the mother, you know, because the disagreement, this happened all the time. Young men just killed their mothers because the mother said, no more freebies, get a job or go to sleep at a certain time. And this guy, 
he was supposed to love the mother, love your mother, and cherish your mother. And don't do anything to your mother. But he ended up stabbing her, waiting until she went to sleep, and stabbing her to death. Okay? And then people will say, well, we believe I, this is one of us, man. That guy, you know, he, he's our brother. We, we need to stand for him, you know, you know, gang gang and stuff like that and things. No, this is a soulless person. He came here. This person that he did to, this is not his real mother. This is a demon that just find a, a, a vessel. They came here and then they fulfilled their mission. That's what it is. Facility, the judge ordering that he stay held on secure detention for at least the next 21 days. His next court hearing set for November 2nd. Now let's remind you of this brutal crime. The victim here, 39 year old Irina Garcia. Derek she was 39. Mom okay. who had there you go. She was 39, and then that's the father again wearing another polo shirt with, with, with the black horse in it. And uh, that's the mother. That's the child when she was pregnant. And I believe he was like 12 back then. You know? And he did this, man. Just given birth to a baby girl just two weeks ago. Two I weeks ago. police say that Derek Rosa waited for his mother to fall asleep on Thursday night then came into her bedroom and stabbed her multiple times. Police saying they found her on the floor of her bedroom, just inches away from that newborn baby's crib. They also say that the boy called 911 to tell dispatch that he had committed this crime. They do say, however, that he stopped short of explaining to detectives Why? the motive behind this killing. Again, you see this all the time. Those people just wake up in the middle of the night or anything. They just kill their people. And then when they ask them, why did you do that? Uh, well, I did this because she... Um, um, because... Be because um, she... Um, I'm sorry. I, I, I don't remember why I did this. Oh, you, you have mental illness. Yes, I do. Oh, uh, yeah, it's mental illness. Beloved, hey, 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 people, blah, blah. mind your own business. This guy has mental illness. Move along, move along. He didn't know what he was doing, you know, and things like that. Because he has mental illness. Because apparently that's what mental illness is. Murdering people and claiming that you don't remember, and then they let you go. We do know, according to sources, that social media communications between this young man and others using uh, phone, uh, texting, that sort of thing is going to be crucial to their investigation. At coming back out yeah. live, we can tell oh, you. Man, they, they, uh, wow, they got that. Wow. They really got this, this kid really bad here. They, the cop just grabbed the kid. Is going to be crucial okay, to their called, investigation. That's the kid. At coming man, back they out just, live, we can they tell just you. Pull uh, him again, down. This like, young out live, we can tell you uh, again oh, that this on. young man does have. They brutally to crucial to their investigation. Look at this. At Boom. Coming they back just out pull this kid down. You, uh, again, that this young man does have a court hearing set for November 2nd, and that uh, little baby at last check was in the custody of her grandmother. <laughs> Reporting Crazy, man. No 13 year old killed their own mothers. You see this all the time, and people going to sit there and saying, Oh, big if I, I doesn't mean anything. We are not in the last day, gang, gang, 2030. We're going to rule 2030. The system going to go back online again. The AI going to take over. You got them right there is an AI taking over. Well, this time is not on your side. This time is not on their side. This time it is on our side. That's why you're seeing all those things happen. Let's keep on moving. For the family of a murdered Houston teen, Diamond Alvarez was shot and killed in January of 2022. Police charged her ex-boyfriend with murder and his trial was set to begin this morning, but he was a no-show. KPRC 2's Robert Arnold has spent the day tracking down answers. He joins us live from Southwest Houston, where he just spoke with family members. Robert? Diamond Alvarez was 16 years old when she was shot more than 20 times in January of 2022. Family members have gathered at her memorial. The reason they are here and not in a downtown Houston courtroom is because, as you mentioned, the man charged with Alvarez's murder, Frank DeLeon Jr., was a no-show when his murder trial was supposed to begin. According to Alvarez's mother and aunt, De Leon's defense attorney told the judge his client got in a car accident on the way to court this morning and may require medical attention. 
Nonetheless, the judge revoked De Leon's bond and issued a warrant for his arrest. Late this afternoon, the district attorney's office got back to us and said De Leon is in custody at Ben Top Hospital, but they didn't have any specific details on that car accident. So as you can imagine, Alvarez's mother is both furious and skeptical. And this is the thing that I do not understand with those people law. You got this guy he shot this woman 22 times and then he's walking around free. You know, he just waiting his own trial. He did this since January. And then he walking around being free. He can do pretty much anything that he want. And then now suddenly got into a car accident. I don't understand how this works. I don't, truly. I need to know everything now. Okay. I can't wait no more. It's been too long, too long. I just need answers. All my questions, they haven't been answered. At about five minutes of four o'clock, I got a call back from De Leon's defense attorney, Joaquin Jimenez, and he says that his client is not running. He was, in fact, in a car accident. Now, Jimenez would not disclose any specific details, but he said all of that would be given to the judge in the morning. That is when a bail hearing is scheduled. So the judge will then decide in the morning whether she will reinstate De Leon's bail or if she will keep him in custody. We're going to be there for that. We're also going to talk to you at five o'clock about how De Leon has violated his bond once before and some of the new information prosecutors have oh, planned to boy. introduce. Anyway, man, let's keep on moving. You know, we remember this dude, all right? New here at six o'clock, police telling the ADUs now investigators that a oh, crap. Oh, there we go. Misunderstanding over some giggling on an RTC bus led to a shooting. Documents revealing the victim was laughing about the smell on that bus with his girlfriend. When 25-year-old Dominic Johnson allegedly shot that man multiple times, including in his stomach, he is now charged with attempted murder and battery. This happened back in May. Police Again, um, this is the, you see the same pattern, okay? Uh, this guy got in the bus. And somebody passed gas, so to speak. And then uh, one dude was laughing. And then this guy, he thought they were making fun of him. And then he pulled out a gun. He shot the guy multiple times and killed him. You know? Did they kill the guy? Police arrested Johnson last month in Arkansas. And he was just moved over to the Clark County Jail over the weekend. I don't know. Let me see. Did they kill the guy? New here at 6 o'clock, police telling the ADUs now investigators that a misunderstanding over some giggling on an RTC bus led to a shooting. Documents revealing the victim was laughing about the smell on that bus with his girlfriend. When 25-year-old Dominic Johnson allegedly shot that man multiple times, including in his stomach, he is now charged with attempted murder and battery. This happened back okay, in that May. Guy, that guy didn't die, but... You know, and then uh, this dude, he thought like the guy was laughing at him as he was the one who did it. It could be the only, it could be him that did it, got embarrassed. But he shot the guy because the guy was giggling with his girlfriend. Or the guy actually did it. He shot and, and shot the guy three times in the belly, multiple times, shot him in the belly. The, yo, the two turds, man. Those guys, the two guys don't play this hatred, okay? Look at the guy's eyes, okay? They don't play this hatred. The two third will drop you dead, like, for the minor thing, the, the, the little less thing you can do. They get offended, the two third will drop you, man. Crazy. Center on Fuquay near Beamer Road around 1.30 this afternoon. KPRC 2's Bryce Newberry is there now with what police know so far. Bryce. Andy and Lisa, this is a really active scene still and emotional as well outside of this family owned business. You can see behind me several of those uh, family members and friends as we understand it who are gathering here after police tell us that the owner's son died in this shooting this afternoon as both parents were here working and this afternoon the suspects are on the run. So just to give you some context about where we are right now, this scene is right next to Pasadena ISD's Morris Middle School. 
That school did have to go into lockdown for about an hour and a half this afternoon as police uh, searched for those suspects. They do say that at this point they have no reason to believe that those suspects went into the school. The school is safe. However, they did get called, like you mentioned, uh, around 1.30 this afternoon. They say the shooting happened very quickly. This is what police just told us led up to it. It appears that the incident is stemming from a disagreement. Our decedent was an employee of this family owned business behind me. Uh, he had an argument with customers over a vehicle transaction. Uh, this argument uh, escalated from a verbal argument to a, a physical one, at which point one of the customers that was involved produced a firearm and shot our victim, uh, it appears, two times. A really sad scene again and people still out here uh, being interviewed. Police tell us that several of them are going to be transported uh, to the downtown station where they will continue to be interviewed this afternoon. But police say they do have a lot of evidence to work with in this investigation, but they still are asking for the public's help. If you know anything that may help them uh, get to an arrest quicker, call Crime Stoppers. We're live in Southeast Houston. I'm Bryce Newberry, KPRC <laughs> 2 News. Again, uh, any little stuff now, people are just shooting people because they're out of their mind. And because there is a judgment in there, man, there is spirits and the energy switch. And you can see this. These things are hemp ramping up and amping up right after the eclipse. In Miami Gardens, a woman shot and killed right outside of a library. Police have a suspect in custody. Local 10 News reporter Leanne Motohong is live at the scene with the latest. Leanne. And that suspect appeared before a bond court judge this morning. This was a shocking crime that took place right outside of this public library. And according to police, the crime was also caught on camera. Good morning, Ms. Small. You were arrested for one count of first degree murder. 64 year old Joyce Small facing a charge of first degree murder after police say she shot a woman outside this public library. I'm shot. It happened in the parking lot of the Miami-Dade Public Library branch in Miami Gardens at Northwest 183rd Street and 24th Avenue. Someone was shot and killed. According to the arrest form, Small approached the victim and shot her multiple times, even as she begged for her life. Detectives set up a perimeter as people inside the library, including children, were forced to stay inside. It's stupid. It's stupid. I mean, like, you got kids who are scared to come outside. You got adults who's scared to come outside because it's senseless shooting. Miami Gardens police took Small into custody and recovered her weapon at the scene. Small told investigators she knew the victim who was homeless and had helped her in the past, but had grown suspicious of her getting involved with her married boyfriend. Police also say that she waived her right to have an attorney present during mm. questioning and decided to speak freely to investigators. Wait, is that thing coming here? What the hell is going on out there? Uh, anyway, I don't know. But anyway, we had uh, bought these stories uh, during our private meeting when we were studying the other night about this woman that shot and killed these other women because when she was homeless, she provided her place to sleep. And now she believed that she slept with her husband or boyfriend or whatever. And then she tracked her down at the library and shot her dead. Now, beloved, let me, well, we talk about this in a private meeting, but in a private story, let me give you my two cents to one dollar to this. There are a lot of people out there. And this has nothing to do with folks that are homeless, okay? That has nothing to do with them. That has, nothing, that has everything to do with people that are scumbags. What those people do, they like to jerk people around. They like to screw people over. And they always get away with it, okay? You help this person. You provide for this person. You give this person everything that you have. And you would have thought that this person would have returned the, 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 the favor in a positive manner. No, this person robbed you. Uh, this person stole your stuff and stole from your family. This person slept with your wife, slept with your husband. 
uh, this person raped your daughter and molested your kids. This person lie unto you and do some stuff and get away with it because they've been doing that all the time. This person lie or say talk bad about you and, and they get away with it because things like that, it, they always get away with it. Whatever they do, they never get punished. And then you got this woman right there. Then you got this woman right there, okay? Normal people, well, I'm not saying normal. Certain people, once you do certain things to them, they let you go. They're like, hey, man, well, I don't have time for this, but you'll do this to someone other than me, and you won't get away with it. And that's why this woman, okay, take that other woman in, provide for her, and she ended up sleeping with her boyfriend, with her husband, or whatever. And she like, oh, hell no. I've done all those things for you, and this is how you repay me. You deserve to die. And that's what happened. A lot of folks out there, Bridget, when things happen to them, you gotta you gotta slow down and say, wait a minute, what 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 is, let let me let, let me see the pattern here. The reason why we, we say this is because of what happened to Sensei. See, there's a lot of people that you help, you give your life for. You're ready to give your life for. You, you do whatever that you want, whatever that you can to, for this person. And that person turn around and stab you in your back. You will let this person go. But certain people like this woman right here, they don't play that, man. They'll track you down and they will kill you. Just like the shooting that happened in New York a year ago. A young woman just walked up to that other young woman and shot her in the head. And then she fell in the ground and shot her multiple times and get in her car and leave. Like nothing happened. Okay? And everybody was like, oh, well, the woman that they shot, she was a good woman and stuff and things like that. But the way it happened, it was very personal. When you look at it, it's like, damn, this is personal. It's not random. It's not like um, they, there was a shooting and then she got shot and things like that. That's not what that is. That's not what that is. It was very targeted. It was very personal. Come to find out, the woman that shot her had a girlfriend. Okay, they were in a car-girl relationship. And that other woman, which was her friend, they were friends. The women that shot the other woman, they were best friend. Okay? Her best friend, so to speak, bumped cookies, or they bumped biscuits with the other women. And she find out that, yo, you are my friend. And you ended up bumping biscuit with my car girl. And walk up to her and shot her dead. Then again, some people, you will screw them over. You will disrespect them. They let you go. They, they will say, hey man, whatever it is, God have mercy upon your soul. God have judgment upon you. I'm too busy. I got things to do. But this woman right here, she's not too busy. She ain't got nothing to do. You become her amusement you become something you become you become a target unto her she'll take you down lesson here beloved you don't screw people over if somebody did good unto you you did good unto this person if somebody was kind unto you be kind to this person even though the person that was kind unto you at one point become nasty unto you you just remove yourself from this person, but you don't bring the past in their face. See, when you don't do that, when you don't say, well, remember when you're in the street, I give you a place to sleep. Remember when you this, when you don't do this, everything that you did for this person will come back as a huge, massive comic debt upon this person. And that's what happened here. Okay. How long we are into this thing? All right. Let's keep on moving. First up, three men are in custody now after a deadly home invasion in Hernando County. Hmm. Deputies say these men 
went into a home in Spring Hill on Wednesday and shot two women inside, killing one of them and sending the other to the hospital. Fox 13's Evan Moon explains why detectives believe the women were targeted. <laughs> This was a tragic incident. The sheriff's office confirming that this was a targeted attack on these two women in their home, all because of a social media post. These three men now under arrest for murder in the first degree. 20-year-old Dawson Deskin, 19-year-old Landon Runyon, and 22-year-old Hacier Martinez. So those are the three gentlemen, okay? This is, this is the, the generation that they have. Those guys don't want to work, man. They don't want to work and they can't work because, well, most, if not all three of them, they're on drugs. They don't want to work. They just has the... <laughs> those guys are just at the two turn. They don't care. They don't give a crap. They are so less. You see it in their eyes. They, they don't care. Okay? That's their generation. That's the 20s. They are calling the Generation Z or whatever they are calling them out there. For targeting two women in their home, allegedly in an attempt to rob them after seeing social media posts showing handfuls of money. Individuals are posting what they think is cool. Here are a couple examples okay, of so Facebook posts. That's what those girls were doing. They were posting a lot of uh, uh, money. Or most of the time, those things are either they get a settlement and an accident. Remember that fellow? He, uh, him and his girlfriend got into a car accident and then they received a seven thousand dollar settlement and then he went online flashing it like hey gang gang man i'm getting money getting money his own friend tracked him down shot and killed him and took the money that were done that may have okay. encouraged these particular suspects to uh, go after this particular victim. The women were involved in what the Hernando County Sheriff described as a high risk activity, hmm. which included prostitution. The sheriff now warning, be careful what you post online. Okay, so they will take this uh, money and then they will just the same money and then they will t like put 20s, a block of 20s, probably $7,000 and then they will put 100 on top of it and tape it, make it look like it's like 100,000 and then they will just put those twenties. Those are all twenties. Okay, this is this is like the um, uh, the five dollar challenge that we have. You know, they will just put it right there and make you think like they have like hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, and they will use it as a phone and you know, gang gang online. And you got those three dudes right here. Okay, you got those three gentlemen right here. All right, they, they, those guys need money, man. And they need that money fast. And they know where you stay at. It's amazing people just think they can go to the internet and post anything and they won't be fine out. You got those guys like, they need that money. Hey, I need money now. Call one of his you went worth. I need that money now, dog. And I seen it and I know where you guys stay at. So I'm coming for you. I need this money, man. The meth and fentanyl and out there. What the hell you need to do? You know, track you down. You know, and kill one and kill one of them, okay? Or one friend who says, hey, you need to take that stuff down from your involved in gambling. If there's one parent out there or one friend uh, can attract criminal activity, particularly when they're involved in a high-risk lifestyle like this or involved in drugs or involved in gambling. Hmm. If there's one parent out there or one friend who says, hey, you need to take that stuff down from your... You're asking for trouble by having this on your on your social media site. The sheriff said gunshots were actually returned by the victims, hitting Runyon in the face and Dawson in the stomach. Children also in the home when shots were fired, but fortunately they were not hurt. The incident leaving neighbors on edge. It definitely is scary, you know, because I have a, a kid and I just, you know, it's a scary thing. Although three suspects are now in custody, the sheriff's office says this investigation will continue for weeks to try to gather more evidence and make sure they know everyone that was involved. In Hernando County, Evan Moon, Fox 13 News. Yeah, so those people on the online flashing, gang gang, and especially if you're running, um, well, especially if you're running prostitution, a lot of men coming over there. They know where you stay at because you told them where you stay. And then they come in there, they perform the deeds, and they left. 
and then they, they check your, your social media and see you ganging your way, a bunch of money, they know where you live. You know, they will tell all the guys, say, hey, she, she got a lot of money in there. How much money? Five, six thousand dollars, man. Now you die because because of the, some money that you made, prostitute stuff. I, uh, I, anyway, let's keep on moving. I mean, I can't imagine that somebody would have to pay $1.4 million for not showing up for a speeding ticket. Connor Cato was driving home on September 2nd when he hmm. was pulled over by Georgia State Patrol for driving 90 in a 55 mile per hour zone. Connor says he knew he was going to get a super speeder ticket, which in Georgia means an extra $200 is added to speeding ticket. I had that. But he did not know the amount would be as high as it was. One million four hundred eighty thousand and thirty two dollars and fifty one cents. So you called the court after seeing that number, of course, and what did the courts tell you? The, the lady told me on the phone, I, I told her, this might be a typo, I don't know, I'm not sure, and I told her the amount it was. And she said, no, sir, that's the correct amount. You either pay the $1.4 million or appear in court on December the 21st at 1.30 p.m. Local criminal defense attorney Snay Patel tells us he's never seen anything like this before. I mean, at first, when I was called about this, I thought it would be a clerical error, but I know you followed up, and apparently it's not a clerical error. <laughs> so, again, I mean, that's, I I've never seen something like this, ever. Patel says you never pay over the maximum amount for traffic violations and misdemeanor charges in the state of Georgia can only go up to $1,000. The maximum for a misdemeanor is $1,000. If it's a misdemeanor of high and aggravated nature, the maximum would be $5,000. Now, the bond amount should be sort of kind of rel relative to that. So for misdemeanors, you wouldn't see bond amounts more than $5,000 if in some cases, in extreme cases, maybe 10,000 or so, just to ensure that if, say, if it's a crime that involves some sort of violence or hmm. if you're anticipating that somebody could uh, commit more crimes, hmm. you would set a higher amount, or if you have any indication that they may not show up for court, you set up a higher amount, but not 1.4 million. I mean, hmm. that's something that goes into cases that are Murder. Drug trafficking yes. or murders or <laughs> aggravated assaults, something of that nature. You we did hear back from the city of Savannah late this afternoon. A representative tells us the balance reflected on the e-ticket is not the actual amount of the fine. It's a placeholder because all super speeders are required to appear in court. That enforceable fine is set by the judge when the defendant appears in court and the penalty can't be more than $1,000 plus state fees. Now, why did someone put $1.4 million in the placeholder for Connor? Hmm. Well, we're working on getting the answer to that question. To scare him so he can go ahead and come to court. Question two. To see the city's full response, visit the article on WSAV. And they did this to me when I was working in North Carolina, uh, North uh, Dakota. And I was coming from North Dakota to Florida and home. And I was about to cross the line from Georgia to Florida. And I was speeding. I was doing 80 and uh, 65, I believe. I was doing 80 and a 65. And this cop pulled me over and he gave me a ticket. I paid the ticket. And then after that, six months later, I received a, a phone call say that I owe two hundred dollars. I say, no, nah, I already paid that money. They say, no, you owe us. And I'm like, why? They say, well, in the state of Georgia, when you receive a super speed ticket, uh, not only you have to pay the ticket, but you have to pay an additional two hundred dollar to the state. And um, it was a battle. And I'm like, you know what? It happened in uh, in 2018. When I got the ticket, I'm like, you know what? Uh, I got his to do, and it's 2019, and uh, I got many stuff to do. I I don't have time for this, so I just pay the 200 and get a, get them off my back, and then boom. So to give someone in 1.4 million dollar speeding ticket, that's how you guys laws work. Okay, that's how you guys laws work. You this is extortion. I don't care who uh, this thing happened to, man. You give that person 1.4 million dollars. Do you know certain people would see this? They would have dialed 988 because there's no way they could have paid this money. Okay, for instance, there's this story that we had uh, last time. 
uh, young men committed suicide because of uh, Bitcoin or um, okay yes that's the that's the story okay what happened okay that's the guy young trader dies by suicide after thinking he racked up big losses in Robin Hood okay he, he, he they, they said he owed seven hundred thirty thousand and one hundred and sixty five dollars negative okay in cash and then he he, he didn't even ask he was so he was so shocked that he killed himself okay and people think that was funny and then when you point some you sent someone 1.4 million dollars okay well you gotta have to come he will discuss with you that's extortion see the law can do this but you can do that okay they can extort it to you they can do all sort of things but you a regular citizen you can do this okay let's keep on moving now. A man accused of killing his roommate and living with her body for months now facing new charges. Good evening to you. I'm Brian Loftus. And I'm Denise Valdez. Our 8 News Now investigators also obtaining photos from inside the crime scene. Prosecutors say they reveal an accused killer's attempt of dealing with a messy situation hmm. as a young woman's body lay in a closet. Investigator David Charns with the details new at 6. David? Brian Denise, prosecutors revealing the weapon they believe 31-year-old George Bone used to kill his roommate. They also say he bought $10,000 worth of merchandise on Amazon as her body lay in a closet, and he continued to live there for more than two months. Photos the 8 News Now investigators obtained show the inside of a home where police say a man lived for months with his murder victim. It's a house battling an insect infestation. Fly traps hang in the dining room, tape stuck to the walls, a candle on the floor in a hallway. The day of, you know, I, I, just, I found her body in the, uh, in the closet. George Bone speaking to 8 News Now from jail in late July. Police believe the body of 29-year-old Beverly Ma, his roommate and love interest, was there since early May. The 8 News Now investigators obtaining the 911 calls shortly after Bone's arrest. Sir? Hello? Sir, yes. tell me exactly what happened. I, my roommate ended her life and I found her. She was, her body was in the closet. But that's not what detectives suspect. Grand jury transcripts revealing the coroner's office found a hole in Ma's skull, which they believe came from a hammer. Officers finding the suspected murder weapon on this table. They say a tested positive for blood. Other DNA tests on the weapon pending on Monday. Police saying Bone placed this large cooler in front of the closet door for fear Ma could come back from the dead. Other evidence shown to that's what happened. That's how those guys think. Okay, they like they murdered someone and then they realize what they did. They're like, okay, she's gonna come back to life, so I better put something so the zombies won't attack me. And then people are like, oh, okay, well, well, well then you have mental issue. You, you have some mental health problem. Uh, and you know what? He has some mental health. Let him go. Let him go. You know, that's what they do. To a grand jury includes this photo of a thermostat. Ma's family, who owns the home, okay, the thermostat is at when they didn't think she was the one texting them back and the energy bill became extremely high. Detectives say Bone kept the home at 60 degrees in an attempt to slow decomposition. Police suspect Bone bought 171 items on Amazon over the course of those few months. In addition to murder, he now faces three theft-related charges, and he's due back in court Thursday. I'm David Charns, 8 hmm. News Now. Crazy. And 8 News Now reached... Crazy. People are killing people all over. We have an update tonight. The widow of a man who was killed in a skydiving accident in Titusville is talking with Fox 35. He landed in someone's front yard. Fox 35's Marie Edinger is hearing from that man's hmm. wife who tells us he was a very experienced skydiver. Somehow he fell to his death. hearing about Fred Morello's life is how he approached every single thing with passion. He was all or nothing and he was kind, people told me. His family says they want to pay that forward. Frederick and Donna Morello met over 40 years ago. He was working as a police officer in a suburb of Cleveland and uh -oh. knew some of her relatives. <laughs> Decided to have a party so that they could introduce him to me. So I was 19 and he was 28 
and I was mesmerized. Later, Fred went to Georgetown and opened up his own civil law practice in Daytona. We had two beautiful children. He was an amazing husband, great father, and just, hmm. just a great guy to know. Fred was an avid exerciser, yoga, hiking, and a thrill seeker, but the type that hmm. wears a helmet, always focused on safety. That's the way Fred did everything. He did everything right or he didn't do it at all. His family says when he first started skydiving, they did get nervous. But after 20 years and 6,000 jumps, they just stopped worrying about it. Until one day, they got a call from the Titusville Police Department saying he died in a skydiving accident. In the beginning, it was we were obsessed with knowing why. How did that happen? How could that happen? Hmm. Titusville police are still investigating that. Security footage shows Fred's parachute did deploy. His family has chosen to give up on wondering and try to stay positive. He passed away doing what he loved, what he loved more than anything in life. Good, Donna good. says it's been a joy hearing so many people come forward and tell stories. Okay, that guy was a former police officer. You don't know what he did to all people, so and he died. He landed in somebody else's backyard, okay? Crazy. Let's keep on moving. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? New body camera video tonight shows a Williams police officer making contact with 32-year-old Chelsea Grimm days before her car was found on a remote road without her in it. In the video, the officer says they got a call for suspicious activity near the cemetery in Williams, and he came to check on her. Chelsea appears to be upset and explains she was working on a photography project. Are you doing all right? Yeah, I just was doing a photo shoot of the lost soldiers and got a little emotional, so I'm so I was crying before okay. I got back on the road. Her disappearance, days after this video was recorded, has both family and authorities confused. Yeah, because not everybody are able to withstand uh, the amount of stress that we, our people, withstand. I'm just a normal shoot, a normal photo shoot, and she got emotional, and an argument happened, and she, she, they never seen her. You know, they never seen her, so it's been a while, and that's what happened searching high and low for tips as to where she went. Here's what we know so far. Chelsea planned to drive from her home in San Diego to Connecticut to meet her family oh, for a boy. wedding, but she told her family she was stopping to camp in Arizona instead. <laughs> Investigators know on September 27th, she met a friend in Phoenix, then canceled lunch with that friend the next day. On September 28th, she surfaces in Williams and has that conversation with the officer, telling him she's planning to camp nearby. Yeah, if it's okay with you, to, yeah. if I hang out here for another like 15 or 20 and then head on the road, that would be my plan, sure. I think. Do you have like a hotel around here or anything? I don't. I was actually thinking of just camping for the night, but I wasn't really sure exactly yet. Gotcha. Well, I didn't you, plan to be here till sunset. The yellow lights over there, the loves, it's a trucker stop in, okay. in the gas station area. You can just sleep there. Nobody, oh, will, nobody will bother you. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. The sheriff's office says on September 30th, a woodcutter in an area near Ash Fork, Arizona, sees Chelsea camping in her car, talks to her, and she says she's okay. But that's the last known contact she had with anyone. Hmm. We're trying our best to hold on to... As you can see, this thing happens so many times. Those people, they're just losing their mind. They just don't know what's going on. They're in distress. They're in distraught. They don't know what's going on. They like, I'm upset. I don't know why. But hey, but we over here, we do know why. Okay, but uh, beloved, I think after this video, I might um, I might stop this thing. But uh, let's go ahead and finish watching that. The positive outcome scenarios and put our faith in the authorities. On October 4th, her parents report her missing. And on October 5th, hunters in the same rural area find her abandoned Ford Focus SUV in the middle of a dirt road with flat tires on the right side. It was locked. Many of her belongings were found inside, but there was no trace of her and all cell phone and credit card activity has since stopped. The Coconino County Sheriff's Office says while they don't suspect foul play at this point, they're trying to figure out if she got in another vehicle or if she hiked out. Either way, by the time they began investigating her disappearance, it had already been five days since the last time anyone saw her alive.
Hmm. The sheriff's office tells me they're actively working with her family and friends on any tips and leads. She also has a pet bearded dragon that is a good identifying factor and possible clue to her whereabouts if it's found. Of course, if you have any information about Chelsea Grimm, please call the Coconino County Sheriff's Office, and we'll also be staying on top of this investigation. Well, uh, we just want to stop here today. I have that couple of stuff. Let's just take a minute or two, talk with the nation, but... Yes, beloved, as you can see, the spirits is all over. The trouble is all over. And we give the Holy One great praise, great glory. I say shalom. Keep on praying. Keep on meditating.